large group. Hey, come on in. We got a great lesson. I promise it's not cheesy. Give me a high five. Woo! All right, good morning, kids. Crazy Jay here. Got my coffee. And we have a great lesson today that's not going to be cheesy. Stay tuned. Put that right here. All right, so I've got a question for you. Do any of you have something that you just want to be able to do really bad, but you just can't? Either you're just not old enough or haven't learned that skill yet, but man, I just really want to be able to do this now. Well, guess what? Sophia, she is working on trying to do cursive all by herself, and she's really smart, but you know what? Cursive, it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of time, and it takes a good teacher to show you all the curves. And yeah, I can sign my name in cursive, but I don't write in cursive every day. And there's some letters ah, Crazy J forgets. Yeah. So, Sophie, you're not alone. There's just some things that we need help with. But in time, with practice, we can get it. So in the Bible story that we're going to hear today, Jesus approached a man and asked him, Do you want to get well? So that's kind of a strange question to ask if you're sick. That's kind of a weird question. Oh, you know, that's like asking a swimmer if he gets wet. Uh, so, but we are going to find out why Jesus asked that question and how the man responded in our story here. So let's uh, get back to our big picture question here. So, does anybody remember what it is? Okay, I'll help you out. Why did God create people? Okay, so let's answer that question together. Here we go. God created people to worship Him, love Him, and show His glory. So this is an important truth to keep in mind as we read the Bible. B I B. L E basic instructions before leaving earth, right? Now when you hear a Bible story, remember that God is doing something bigger behind those scenes. Okay, so there's the story in the front, but God's doing a bigger thing in the background. It's pretty cool. He created each person with a purpose. And you know what? That includes me, and that includes every one of you. God created you for a purpose to be here. All right now, we're going to do a quick review for um, for our stories that we've been look, looking at. So, God the Son, that's Jesus, He came to Earth in the flesh as a baby born in which city? Bethlehem. Right. Now, around 30 years after he was born, Jesus began his ministry. He taught people about God and his kingdom. Now, as he traveled, Jesus interacted with many people. And we saw in our previous weeks some stories that, one, Jesus healed how many men? It was 10 men. And how many was saved? One. Later, we looked at a story about Jesus healed a woman and raised a girl from the dead. That's awesome! That was last week. Now today's Bible story is called Jesus Healed a Man Who Was Lame. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Okay, lame. Okay, I yeah, I hear you kids. Even teenagers say, Oh, that's so lame, dude. And, well, they don't say dude anymore. That's... Yeah, that's going back in my days. But, yeah, that's so lame. What does lame mean? Yeah, we kind of think, oh, well, in the way you're saying it that way, well, that's so lame. That sounds like, oh, that's so weak or just weird or it doesn't make any sense or who cares. That's so lame. Yeah, but lame, what it really means is Jesus healed a man who could not walk. So lame equals not able to walk. You got it? All right, so listen closely to the story. We're going to watch this Bible video. You ready? Here we go.
Jesus went to Jerusalem and stood by the pool of Bethesda. Many people were at the pool who were blind, lame, or paralyzed. Jesus noticed a man who could not walk. He had been lying there for a long time. Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? The man answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Someone else always gets in before me. The man thought if he could get into the water, he would be healed. Jesus told him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Right away, the man was miraculously healed. Wow. He picked up his mat and started to walk. This happened on the Sabbath. So the Jews told the man who was healed, it is against the law to pick up your mat on the Sabbath. The man replied, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. Who was this man? The Jews asked. But the man who was healed did not know who had healed him. By this time, Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. Later, Jesus found the healed man in the temple. Jesus said to him, See, you are healed. Do not sin anymore, so that something worse doesn't happen to you. Then the man went to the Jews and told them that Jesus had healed him. So the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was healing people on the Sabbath. Jesus told the Jews, My father is still working, and I am working too. Now the Jews wanted even more to kill Jesus because he wasn't just breaking their rules about the Sabbath. He was saying that God is his father, making himself equal to God. Jesus is God's son, and he always did what God said was right. The man at the pool was unable to help himself. Jesus healed him and he obeyed Jesus' commands. In a similar way, we are unable to free ourselves from sin. Jesus calls us to trust in him. When we trust in Jesus, he frees us from the power of sin and death so we can follow him and obey him. All right, welcome back. So the pool of Bethesda was in the city of, which city was it? Jerusalem. Yeah, not yeah, not in Bethlehem. Jerusalem. Okay, the capital. Now, people who were sick or disabled, they went to the pool in hopes of being made whole or healed. They believed, and this was the oral tradition back then, they believed an angel would stir up the waters. I would like that song that we do. I can't wait to get back together and do that song together. But they believed an angel would stir up the waters and the first person to get in, me first, yeah, the first person to get in, they would be healed. Now, the man Jesus met at the pool had been disabled for 38 years. 38 years, that's a really long time. And he had been lying at the pool for a long time, just waiting. Whew. Yeah. Now, something about this story that I find pretty interesting is Jesus, he was searching. He was seeking out this man that it talks about right here in the Bible. And now there's a question that Jesus asked the man, and it's in John 5, 6. So let's see what that question is that Jesus asked him. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Well, duh, it kind of goes back to our swimmer story. Yeah, did they get wet? So the man explained that he was never able to get to the pool before others got in. Okay, did that answer the question, do you want to get well or not? Well, this man's faith was in getting into the pool. So Jesus was testing him here. Jesus had compassion on the man. And what did he tell the man to do? And that's in John 5, 8. Let's see what that says. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And he did. He 
He had faith. He believed. He trusted. And he trusted in something other than the water. He'd been, you know, lame, not able to walk for 38 years. Who knows how long he'd been waiting to get into that pool, and everybody else got in ahead of him. And his faith was in the pool, but not anymore. Huh. So when the Jews saw that the man was healed, were they amazed by this miracle? No, they were not. It seems like they would be. They should be, but they weren't. What is wrong with these people? Uh, they told the man that he was breaking the law, breaking the law, by picking up his mat because it was on the Sabbath day. Now, the Jews were also upset with Jesus for breaking their laws and for claiming to be God's son. Ooh, now that's important. That's going to be one of our big points here that we got to really uh, pay attention to. When God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, when he got baptized, and whew, yeah, that was amazing. But now Jesus is saying that God is his father. And the Jewish people had a belief and an understanding that, hey, if somebody says they are the son of God, that makes them equal to God. And can Jesus lie? No, he wasn't lying. He can't lie. And he's telling the truth. Jesus is God in the flesh. Wow. So the man at the pool, he was unable to help himself. And Jesus healed him, and he obeyed Jesus' commands. Now, in a similar way, we're unable to free ourselves from sin. And Jesus calls us to trust him and him alone. And when we trust in Jesus, he frees us from the power of sin and death so we can follow him and obey him. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Lucy from Wichita, Kansas asks, why does God allow people to have disabilities? Lucy, that is a fantastic question. You know, it's one that is, is really important to me because I have a daughter with a disability. She has a limb difference. And so this is a question that my family has wrestled with for some time, and so I'm glad you asked it. Well, here's, here's the big idea, that people are born with disabilities in part because we live in a broken world. Uh, sin has infected every part of this world, and that includes that at times people are born with disabilities, like my daughter who only has one leg and not two. And so that's the real reason in a nutshell. But let me unpack that for a minute more because I think this is really important. And this is something that we have really worked hard to communicate to my daughter and others. And it's this, that there are no accidents for God that my daughter was knit together in the womb the way that God wanted her to be, and other people with disabilities are knit together the way God wanted them to be. Now, it's hard for us to understand this, but again, we remember everything God does is for His glory and our good. And so God has a purpose in disabilities. He's got a purpose in doing this. You know, we saw that in the story today with the man who was lame, that God used him to draw other people to himself. Uh, and so we see that God can use even disabilities, things that are really difficult. And we wouldn't want somebody to be born with a disability, but God can use even those difficult things in our lives to draw other people to him, to help us understand how good he is and how loving he is. And here's the wonderful thing, that Christ came to make everything wrong right again one day. And here's our hope. My hope is that one day my daughter will run in heaven with two legs when God has made everything right again. And so everybody who has a disability has that to look forward to, that God will make right all wrongs through Jesus Christ. So here's a question back for you. How can you show love to people of all abilities? So can anyone tell me, for our memory verse, it's out of the book of Isaiah. So, uh, is that in the New Testament after Jesus was born here on earth? Or is that in the Old Testament before Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Isaiah? Okay. 
Oh, yep, Old Testament, that's right. So long before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about a servant who would come from God. And Isaiah said, this servant would be and bear our sicknesses and carry our pains. Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. And prophecy just means a prediction. Something that they say, this is going to happen in the future. And then it actually happens. Jesus is the one and only that did these things. And Jesus healed many, many people. So we've been looking at that for the last few weeks, haven't we? So in today's Bible story, Jesus healed a man who could not walk. He was lame, but Jesus' power is not lame. Jesus' power is awesome. All right, are you ready for our memory verse? It's Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, and it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Yeah, it's saying a lot there. Jesus, he took all the sins that we've done, and God placed them on him. And Jesus paid for our sins in our place by going to that cross. And he really suffered. And then he died. That's a huge payment. That's showing love to do something in our place. And that's not the end of the story, though. Yes, he died. Yes, he was put in a tomb. But on the third day, what happened? Jesus rose again. He conquered sin. He conquered Satan. He conquered death so that we can have eternal life and be with God forevermore. That is awesome. All right. Well, if you'd like to contact us to give us some more questions from kids or you have uh, prayer requests or praise the Lord reports, uh, just email us. And now, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you alone are good. You alone are awesome. You alone can forgive sin. We have no power. We can't erase our own sins. And that's why we need a Savior that can save us from sin. We need a Savior that can give us eternal life. And that Savior is through God's one and only Son, Jesus, who is God in the flesh. And we believe, we really believe that Jesus, what you did, Pay for our sins and allows us to have a relationship with you when we repent of our sins, we ask for forgiveness, and we have sorrow for the wrong things that we've done. And you've done everything for us. And you ask us to trust you. You ask us to repent, to turn away from sin, to live for you. Thank you for showing us the way. Lord, thank you for seeking us out. Lord, if you look at it, we're the ones that are lame, the ones that can't walk on our own because we're crippled with sin. And you come to us. You say, I'll take that from you. Stand up, trust me, and I will forgive you. So Lord, I pray that that's what our kids do. I pray that's what our families do. Lord, I do ask for your, your protection. Just surround our families. 
with your love. Surround our families with your truth. And Lord, may we love you and may we serve you because you are a worthy king. You are worthy of our praise. We pray all these things in Jesus' strong name. Amen. We'll see you soon. Take care.